And we back. Dude, this is a double upload. I think this is our first ever double upload. It's crazy. Shout out to our guy, Lester. Shout out Lester Whitehead. Lester, absolute, thank you. Absolute real one. We appreciate you here over at the Vibe Podcast. You're our first viewer. Of course. In our, like, this pretty, side, Oh, my God. I'm pretty sure he's a bot. No, 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 no. Lester's a real guy. Lester. I don't know. I have my doubts. Lester, thank you for your suggestion to uh, help get more viewers on this podcast, help gain an audience. But Lester did keep commenting, keep viewing. Everyone's just got to be like Lester. Everyone's just got to be like Lester. All right. So I think we got to talk about the NFL. You know, it's mid-July. We're starting to get into training camp, preseasons in the near future. So, I mean, there's some news came out about Zeke today about how he's going to skip training camp to try to get a contract, even though he has two years left on his current deal. So do you have any, like, thoughts on this situation? I mean, I, I kind of understand why he's doing that, just because, I mean, you look at, I mean, Melvin Gordon is kind of doing the same thing. Oh, Melvin, sure. Gordon is different, though. Gordon has a year left. Yeah, Gordon's different. I know, but it's like, if you're running back, you're trying to get paid right now. Okay. Because you see what happens to, like, Todd Gurley. And, well, Todd Gurley like, got how- paid. I know, I know, but just how quickly like, oh, okay. this injury affects him, you don't want that because then you're left without a second contract. I agree with that. So, um, yeah. so like, you want to cash in as soon as possible if you're running back. Okay, so... And, like, he's one of the few people that has, like, that leverage. I mean, yeah, he's, he's he's easily top three running back in the league. You're going to entertain yeah. him and Saquon and Kamara, but uh, for me, uh, I, I, I don't mind players holding out for money. I kind of like... Yeah. Especially NFL players, they go through a lot in a regular season and sometimes the playoffs, so I feel like they deserve to get paid. But I feel like, you know, two years left, it's just like, I get one year left because you just want to you just want to get paid. But, dude, yeah. two years is just, it's just too early for me. That's true. It is pretty early. And also, he hasn't, like, proven to me that he can, like, be mature. True. Like, it seems true. like every offseason that Zeke's been in the NFL, there's some, like, you know, case with the law, you know, it was, yeah, it's just, it's just not good. Zeke got suspended for four games. I think it was for the domestic abuse thing. Like, Zeke hasn't proven to me if I'm a, a guy in the Cowboys organization making the decisions that I would give him that type of contract. He just hasn't proven it to me. I mean, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, like, if you were the Cowboys, how would you, like, attack the situation? Would you just, like, let it be? Would you pay Zeke? Would you look to trade him? Uh, what would you do? That's there? that's kind of tough. Well, firstly, I would talk to Zeke. Okay. Like, see if he's like actually serious about. Yeah. See how demanding he out. is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, if he's, because I think, I think he wants an extension, but it's a whole other thing to actually hold out. Okay. Because then, where do you go from there? So. Okay. We'll see. We'll see if he. But, I mean, if I was the Cowboys, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's what I, I would probably. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I don't think I would give him an extension yet. I'd wait a year. I'd trade him. You trade him? Oh, absolutely. Trade him. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I trade him so fast. Gone, oh, I trade him so fast. All right. Oh. So, so here's why I trade him. Okay. Why would you trade him? First off, the Cowboys have a lot of contracts coming up. You got to pay. You have to pay Prescott and Cooper. So you know they okay. can't really just throw money out out the window. And they have young yeah. players on defense like a Jalen Smith, like a Van Der Esch that. You don't have to play. You know, you don't have to pay them now, but down the line, you know where Zeke would affect your cap. You're gonna have to pay those guys to keep them, and they're so much more valuable than Zeke is. Yep. Uh, that's a B. I feel like Zeke's just kind of a distra- distraction in the off season. Like, dude, we're hearing about Zeke every off season. I don't think that's good for a team. I don't know. I don't know if that necessarily affects the Cowboys, though. Like, their performance on the field. It doesn't know? affect their performance on the field, but it, it's not like he's, like, David Johnson. You hear nothing about him. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. you, you can count right. on David Johnson to just go and get his work in, get get his 1,000 yards, stuff like that. With Zeke, he get he gives you production. It's just, like, who knows? Maybe he's going to get hit with another four games. You know, it's just, yeah, I don't right. know. And then also, I mean, you you know how what my stance is on a running back especially yeah. with the Cowboys. They have one of the better O-lines in the league. I feel like they can yeah. win without Zeke. They have Amari Cooper now. Prescott's not bad. I mean, if you throw anybody behind that offensive line, I think they can succeed. So uh, That's fair. But wait, my question is, okay. why would you not just ride out Zeke's contract? So I would just gauge the market because I feel you can get a haul for Zeke. The, like Zeke's value is at the highest it would ever be for this offseason right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, 
So yeah, I'm not exactly. saying that I I'm not saying I would put him on the trade block. So you know if I you know gauge calls for Zeke and then I just don't get what I'm liking, then yeah, I would just be okay. Yeah, go play for me. Basically, like play another year and uh, yeah, just ride out his rookie contract and not pay him, or just look to yeah. trade him because dude, you can get a haul for Zeke. We saw what the Cowboys got for Herschel Walker. Obviously, it's a different league, <laughs> but like I think that I think they I could get two to three on. first round picks. Really? I think they could. Dude, dude teams are so really? stupid. I don't know about that. Dude, I don't know who would trade that. Like, think about, like, all right, like, let me just think about it. Like, who's a team that needs a running back and is stupid? Ooh. The Bucks, maybe? I was thinking the Bucks. Like, dude, like, the Bucks would oh, yeah, dude, Zeke and Jameis. Like, they would. Oh, my God. You know, like, they, yeah, like, they would. They definitely would. Like, the Dolphins. Yeah, they would. You know, like, there's just these teams. Dolphins, yeah. Yeah, maybe. So that's why I would, yeah, you got to... I mean, dude, who who else? Like, I mean, I could see like Green Bay needs a running back, but Green Bay is pretty well yeah, run. Green Bay would not do that. Green Bay is not stupid. Hopefully, they did pay Jimmy Graham obscene amounts of money for nothing. That's true. That's aside the point. Oakland, Oakland would. You have to uh, Jacobs. It dude, it doesn't matter. Put him in the trade. <laughs> Put him in the trade. <laughs> Imagine that hard knock so they trade for Zeke. Yeah, fucking. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, Hard Knocks is out when preseason starts, right? Yeah, Hard Knocks is out in a few okay. weeks. Yeah. Looking forward to Hard Knocks. But yeah, I would I would ride out Zeke's contract. Yeah, I would I would look to trade him and then but I would I would be like I need all the value I can. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you, you get what I'm saying. And then yeah. I would ride him out this year and then definitely trade him next offseason. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Oh yeah, just for sure. Oh okay. yeah, it's it's not even close for me. All right. Uh, so you would franchise tag him and then trade him. Okay. Oh, franchise. I mean, yeah. Or no, fifth-year option. That's what I meant. Fifth yeah, year. I, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So now, staying with the NFL, I feel like we. I mean, dude, we're gonna talk about a lot about about the uh, NFL. Lester, I know we. Lester, you're the only one here. So we're just kind of <laughs> talking Lester, here. Lester's not even here. Is nah, he? nah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, yeah. So I mean. Keenan and I's favorite sports probably the NFL. So we're going to be talking about a lot about the NFL. So, first order of business. We got team most likely to make the playoffs that didn't. So it's just teams right. that were out of the playoffs last year that you think have the best chance to be in it this year. It's a pretty simple topic. It's, it's pretty simple. Yeah, pretty straightforward. So who's your team? Who do you got? I got the Atlanta Falcons. Okay, I like that pick. Okay, now here's why. Here's why. They, so they missed the playoff last year. They, they, they did, in fact, miss the playoffs. With a 79 record. Okay. Second, but still managed to get second in the NFC South. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think they win the division with the Saints in it. Okay. But I'd say there, if there were to be such thing as a lock for the wild card, I think they would be a lock. Okay. Because, I mean, you look at the talent on offense. You do have I, a lot of talent on offense. You got, like, Matt Ryan. Um, Julio, Calvin Ridley. you know, Calvin Ridley, and their O-line's nice, Alex Mack holding it down, I'm pretty sure the rest of it is pretty solid, <laughs> main reason, <laughs> like, I mean, I can look, I can go through it. No, it's, it's, it's for, we're fine, yeah, we're fine no, right you guys now. get it, I mean, like, yeah. Well, no, basically, like, I, I was, I was, uh, I'm really high on Atlanta this year, and basically, like, they're, the only reason they didn't make the playoffs last year yeah, is because injuries. their entire secondary are hurt, and yeah, Deion Jones so, I mean, got hurt. Chances that happens again. Yeah, so it's if like they, they have a yeah. talented defense, like yeah. with Neil Jones, Trufant. Yeah, I mean, all they have to uh, do is Carter stay healthy Allen. and they're fine. Yeah, all so, I mean, it's not like the NFC South is that hard. I'm not too high on the Panthers. I'm I'm, I'm kind of like, South. I'm kind of, I'm cautiously high on the Panthers, but. I'm not too high. My, my concern for the Falcons would be, so, I don't, I mean, you and I agree. I don't think they're winning the division. I think the Saints are just too good. Yeah. So if you look at that, right, they're probably gonna be contending with Philly or Dallas, whoever doesn't win the division there, right? Okay. And then you could say the same thing for like Minnesota, Green Bay, or Chicago, you know, because yeah. one of those three are gonna win the division on the other two teams. And then you look at the West, you could say that the Seahawks definitely, if they don't win the division, and then yeah. dude, maybe the Niners make a run this year if Shanahan gets a full season with the Garoppolo. Maybe the Rams take a big enough step back. And where they don't win the division, but they're good enough for a wild card. So while I agree with you that like the Falcons are definitely a team bound to make the playoffs this year, it's kind of like it's dicey for me. I don't know because just the I, N- I, the I NFC is the stacked, Falcons, dude. The NFC is I stacked. Know. I agree with you, but I think they're way more well-rounded, okay, and consistent than those other teams. Okay, and 
I mean, you could say I remember who they, they drafted two old linemen. I remember that. Lindstrom. Yeah, they drafted Lindstrom and uh, some other McGarry. fucker. McGarry. Yeah, I they, 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 Lindstrom was high, so we'll see how that goes. They resigned. Uh, no, no, I thought Lindstrom. He's a really good prospect. Thirteen, dude, that's high. Yeah, it's high. it is kind of high, but you, it feels a need. So, and Grady Jarrett. Uh, yeah, they, they resigned. Him. Really, yeah, yeah. So I mean, they got. I mean, Michael Beasley. Is he still. Vic, no, Vic, Vic Beasley. Beasley. Vic Michael, Beasley. Michael Beasley. <laughs> not you. Not Michael Beasley does not play football. Vic Beasley. I'm pretty sure he was like not that great last year. But nah, he's he like a step back. Finish. But yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I definitely agree like... with you on like the Falcons. But I, I was just kind of pointing out how stacked the NFC yeah. is. NFC yeah. is stacked. Uh, my is team. Stacked. My team would be the Steelers, better known the as Steelers. the Squealers. So okay. I'm looking at this like as if I was betting, not as a fan, obviously, but. For me, the Steelers are kind of like they're a really good uh, organization. They're well run. You, you okay. can't fault them there. Mike Tomlin has never been under five hundred, so it's just kind of yeah. like running. It's just kind of like their team. They're it's just kind of a safe bet. I feel like the Ravens are going to take a step back this year. I mean, if you're a Steelers fan and you're fair and you're afraid of the Bengals, like, dude, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> so the only real competition to win their division is the Browns. And while the Browns have a lot of talent, I feel like they're not ready to win a division. I feel like they're ready to maybe make a wild card, but winning the division, that's tough for me. So, yeah, I got the Steelers. I mean, even if they don't win the division, there's not much competition for a wild card. You know, there's teams like the yeah, AFC South. I agree. You could have Houston. It's, you could have Tennessee. Yeah, it's, it's less than the NFC. Yeah, yeah, but, there's just less talent all around, really. Yeah. My question is uh, if – I mean, the main question marks about the Steelers is – Ben Roethlisberger is getting older. I don't think it'll take a huge step back. Or anything, yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll take a big enough step back for them to be like seven and nine. Could be the case, you know, Mike Tomlin. There's some question marks about how much, how good of a coach he is. I'm not, no, no, he, no, no, no. The Steelers won't do anything in the playoffs, but they'll make it. That's my thing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and then Antonio Brown's not there. Oh, that Drew that's irrelevant for me. Up. Oh, that's irrelevant. Okay, I mean, but yeah. they still got a lot of holes in their defense. They don't really have. They did get Devin Bush. Good. I'm high on Devin Bush. I don't know about you. I they like got Devin, Devin Bush. Bush. I like Devin Bush. That's really good. But like, in like terms Bush. of their cornerbacks, I mean, kinda... yeah, no, I'm just saying, like, their corners, like, it's just kind of like a normal normal Pittsburgh team. Like, they're still going to yeah. have a high powered yeah, offense. They're still going to have a good O line. And their defense yeah. are just going to be full with question marks. So I just think, like, when I look at, you know, the rest of the teams in the AFC, they're like, okay, they're top six. You know, like, let's say the Browns win yeah. the division. I think they can beat out teams like, the Texans and the Titans and the Jags and the Jets, because those are kind of like the four teams that I'll put besides Kansas City and LA, whoever right. like loses right. out of that. Yeah, so that's kind of why I would pick the Steelers. All right, that makes sense. All right, and then we're just going to kind of go the reverse of that. You know, teams that uh, made the playoffs, that's most likely to miss it. This is pretty easy for me. This is this is pretty easy. This is easy? Oh, yeah. Right, you want you want to go first? Oh, yeah, it's the Ravens by a million. Like, okay, I mean, I, I know, I, I know. I, I hate the Ravens. So, but think about it, like, Lamar Jackson, everyone has tape on him, so he's just not going to be as potent as he was last year. Alex Collins just tore his, tore his ACL, so there it goes. Around. I'm, not, I'm not high on running backs, but now Mark Ingram has to like, carry the load, and it's fucking Mark Ingram. Like, I feel like the only reason he was good it was because he was the backup to Kamara. You know, like, so, you know, they're all, like, the defense's focus was Alvin Kamara and then, oh, Mark Ingram. You know, like, that's kind of my opinion on it. Uh, they yeah. lost C.J. Mosley in free agency, so they kind of lost the heart of their defense. And I just like they got Earl Thomas, sure, but I, the middle linebacker is more important to me than a safety. And I just think they suck, really. Like they don't have any receivers. The two tight ends that they drafted in the first round are awful. Like, did I don't know? I feel like I'm super duper yeah, low on the Ravens. I'm still confused why they drafted two tight ends. Yeah, they drafted back to back tight ends in the first round and they both aren't even that good. Yeah, Mark Andrews, Hayden Hurst. Yeah, they're just like they're guys. Great. Yeah, they're just guys. Yeah. They don't have any weapons on offense, which is not a great combo. Yeah, they have like Lamar Jackson. What do they even the have? Like, cuz they lost to Ron Brown. Receiver, no, they, they, they lost drafted, John Brown. Um, or, they drafted a uh, what's his name? Who they draft? The first oh, receiver. Hollywood Brown, yeah. Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown. Yeah, yeah. So he's I, mean, a rookie, I think though. he's actually a decent. He's yeah. a decent fit, but he's not going to make a huge difference. Yeah, you know, I mean, you for know? I, I kind of feel bad for Marquise. It's tough when a receiver's throwing the ball, yeah. you know? He's, he, yeah, like, there's <laughs> nothing he can do. And you have Lamar Jackson throwing you the ball. Exactly. I don't know. It's like I every, do that. Like, imagine playing 16 games in Wildcat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, the only way I see a Lamar Jackson winning a few games there's is no if, way. like, teams, if teams just don't contain him. 
on like his scrambles or anything. I mean, he might be able to beat the Bengals because like yeah, yeah, Jordan Evans will be running after. Him. Like yeah, sure, they got the defense over their defense on. Yeah, but who are the linebackers? Up. Did. Yeah, they lost Mosley. They like, and they lost T. Sizzle. Like, I mean, he sucks, but I'm just saying, like, who the hell? They lost to Darius Smith, too. Who the uh, hell? Like, Tyus Bowser? No, they still have a decent uh, pass rush, I think. Yeah, the pass rush no, isn't have, bad. But... Uh, what's his name? Pierre. Oh, my God. What's his Who the fuck? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Go to the rosters, mate. Let's just take a yeah. trip to the rosters. Yeah. Do the research. One moment for the... Uh... Yeah, we need to pull. We're pulling up the roster right now. We don't really know the yeah, Ravens yeah, like okay, that. Okay. So they got Earl Thomas. Okay. Yep. Forgot about that. Coming off an injury. Is actually, coming off heavily an injury. underrated on a cornerback. Oh, their cornerbacks are nice. Actually, this is what I forgot about. Um, Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith. Marlon Humphreys. Yeah. Marlon Humphreys might be the most underrated player in the league. <laughs> okay. I'm dead serious. I'm okay. dead serious. Right, they sure come out of a filthy secondary. Oh, wait, no. Don't they have Tony Jefferson a strong safety? Yeah, but he sucks. Okay, but, like, it's not that bad. And Earl Thomas is coming off an injury. Okay, fine. But their secondary is really nice. Um, it's Michael Pierce. That's their defensive tackle. Well, no, no, I, I'm kind of more concerned with their linebacking depth. That wasn't questioning yeah, their yeah, secondary. Yeah, they don't, they don't really have. Like, who is their best line? Who is, their, like, the most notable linebacker? Matthew Judon. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Like, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Like, I mean, you can have a good secondary, but when you don't have, like, if you don't have a potent pass rush and, like, the quarterback has yeah. three to four seconds to throw, like, you, they, it's just, what the fuck, you know? Yeah, I just yeah. don't think their offense is going to. I think their I, offense might be one of the worst in the league. I think it's going to be the worst in the league, right right in front of the, the Dolphins, because it's the fucking, they, they might start Fitzmagic <laughs> over Josh Rosen. Dumbasses. Figure it right. out, dude. Fuck. Don't even get me started on Miami. Don't, don't, don't do it. I won't. All right, who's your team? That's okay. Uh, I went with the Seahawks. That's interesting. Now, That's interesting. Wow, okay. Is it? I mean, if you look at the NFC, like we talked about earlier. NFC is stacked. I, I really don't stacked. think there's any way they win their division. I honestly don't think so. I, I actually, I, my, that's one of my hot, I think. I don't think the Rams are going to win their division next year. I okay. think they're going to take a step even, back. All right, even if the Rams don't win their division, are they winning it over the, the Niners? That's another That's question. the question. Like, That's they the might question. be third in the division. Like, okay. I don't know. They're beating the Cardinals, obviously. But... Yeah, the Cardinals. And you Niners look at the rest, of the rest of the landscape of the NFC. Okay. I mean, Eagles and Cowboys, that's one yeah, of those. We, yeah, we, yeah, we talk, we, yeah, we talked about those. Yeah, so it's going to be tough either way. So, And when you look at their team, the team itself, I mean, of course, you have Russell Wilson, <laughs> but their O line. They're all not great. Like, right. they're, no, so for me, let me just like get my thoughts on Seattle. I kind of okay. like compare Seattle to Pittsburgh in the sense like Seattle's a really good like organization. They're really well run. Okay. And Pete Carroll has done a really good job to rebuild that defense. That's so they, they still have Wagner, but they, you know, I don't know the players, but I know their defense was good last year. I don't know how they made the playoffs last year. Like, dude, I thought yeah, they were going to be terrible. I mean, okay. They relied heavily on their rushing attack. You know what I mean? Yeah, but no, but that had like nothing changed though. Chris Carson's still there. Russell Wilson's still mobile. And I mean, they got DK Metcalf. I mean, who knows? Right, right. But they lost. Think about who they lost. They lost Doug Baldwin. They did lose Baldwin. Frank Clark. I'm, okay, Frank Clark was good. Yeah, yeah. Justin Coleman. The corner. Yes, he's actually. I think he was actually pretty good. Ah. Uh. That's that's replaceable. I mean, you you're relying on Dwayne Brown basically. And the, whoever is Mikey, uh, I'm just saying, like, if I was if I was betting, I would bet like on the Seahawks over like a team like Green Bay, over it. You know, I don't know. I agree with you. I don't think the Seahawks make the playoffs either, but that's going to be close. That they're going to be a competitive team this year, definitely. They're always competitive. Yeah, I don't. I think I think uh, they'll be better than the Ravens. Oh, I mean, but... that's like yeah, it's like saying that the Saints are going to be better than the Dolphins. Fuck Ravens. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way the Ravens win more than five games this year. There's they no do way. have a nice home field advantage, the Seahawks. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so, I mean I, they could. I just don't think they will. Okay. Uh, it's just not well rounded. Uh, all right. As a team. So Earl Thomas. Yeah. I think I made my point. I mean, they didn't really have Earl Thomas for half the Cam, season, but I mean, Cam. Yeah, Cam wasn't there either, but <laughs> he's officially gone now. Thank you. You're all welcome. right. So last topic with the NFL for this pod, for this epi. So there's been, like, kind of rumblings about an 18-game schedule. 
So basically, for those who don't know, basically Lester, what's up, Lester? But basically, the plan would be to only have a two week preseason, and then have like the preseason week three and four. Those would be regular season week one and two. So yeah. then that that makes eighteen games, and then. The like the proposed thing right now is every player would be required to uh, like miss two games. Yeah. But for At me, least two games. yeah. But for me, I think for to get it passed that there would be a thing that players can play all games. So let's just go on the preface that it's just an eighteen game schedule and there's no there's nothing else. It's okay, just well, the first, games. Yeah. I just want to quickly touch on that the the sixteen game you can only play in sixty game is a terrible idea. It just like I kind of like wants, it. No, who wants to see like? I kind of like it. Who wants to see like Alex Magoo play? Who's Alex Magoo? He's the Jaguars' backup quarterback. Exactly. <laughs> no one wants. No one's gonna watch that. No, but no, but for me, I feel like it just adds a whole. It just adds another element. Okay. Yeah. No. It adds it's, another element. But, but when I'm ruins the integrity. Wait, wait. Sorry. Because, oh, sorry. You, you just cut out. Just rephrase that yeah, for the okay. for the viewers at home. Of course, it, it kind of ruins the integrity because okay. let's say a team is a really solid team games, but you know misses the playoffs because of the two games that long their backups are playing it. Well, it for, just seems like well, I mean, for me, anyways, like the way I look at it is, if everyone's playing under the same rules, then I'm cool with it. And injuries happen every year, so I feel like it's not going to be like. I, I don't think it'll be too bad. I mean, I don't... I'm not saying I want the idea to happen, but, like, if it happened, it'd be kind of be interesting. You know, I don't know, man. Just to see know. some I think, players. I think it would get old quick. I know, but... I know, like, and also... Aaron it, Rodgers sitting on the sideline, you got Brett Hundley. Exactly. So exactly. Pictures. I don't... Dude, no. Exactly. No. Packers <laughs> have to win to get into the playoffs with Brett Hundley. Well, no. Obviously, there'd be strategy. There'd be... There'd be strategy. That's, uh, that, that's the thing I'm I talking about. Dude, we could have multiple podcasts on, like, when did you sit players? Yeah, I know. But, like, dude, let's say your team waltzes out week one and it's, like, your backup quarterback. And, I'll, I'll and then you win. win. <laughs> and then you win. You can talk nah. so much shit. Dude, I'm, I, I'm I just saying, I don't mind the idea. I don't. I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, in terms of 18 games, I mean, like, I just think that we shouldn't add more games. Yeah. I, I think, think we should so, just shorten think. the preseason to two weeks and just keep the 16 games. But, I mean, if they add 18 games, I'm not going to be, like, in an uproar. I'll be like, yeah, where I mean, the season just I, starts earlier. I think it's just kind of unfair to the players because if you – I think there was a – the NFLPA came out with, like, a number that if the NFL season's 18 games, the career length would go from, like, 4.2 years to, like, 3.7 years. Yeah, Those obviously. Like – it would decrease, is my point. So, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, in though... In terms of contracts, in terms of contracts, like, oh, yeah. Gurley would have got his injury, like, a year earlier and wouldn't have got paid. You know? uh, I don't you know, know about I mean? that one. I don't know. That's, I mean, it could have happened. I mean, yeah, like, but yeah, but anything could have happened. You know, like, it's just yeah, that's... Yeah, no, but it's just, when you think about the contracts that NFL players sign... Yeah, I just I just don't want to play, I just don't want to play that game for me. You know, like, I just, I, I just want to play that game, like, like, just, like, the hypothetical. No. Yeah, the hypothetical, I mean... It would, I mean, it's more football, which is great, but in, for the playoffs, I don't know, for the players, I don't know. I'm going to be rough. I mean, yeah, for me, I just think that, like, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, they're just trying to make more money. Yeah. yeah. That's just kind of it. I, I mean, mean if, yeah. they, if they were to do that, what you would have to do is, well, what you could do, you could extend the season to two more weeks and add five weeks. I mean, so you could, but then you would, you would, yeah, I mean, I mean, but like, I mean, hmm. I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of things you can do. I feel like yeah. we, we should just wait to talk about it when it's yeah. more real. Like, this won't happen yeah. for like, maybe like another three years. This isn't yeah. like a, yeah, this won't happen for, all right, that's yeah. the NFL. We'll talk, yeah. I mean, there's so much to talk about in the NFL. There's a lot of shit going on in the NFL. Maybe go through some power rankings. I don't know. We'll see what yeah. happens. So now we're going to entertainment. So we're not going to stray away from music for this episode. So we're going to talk about what you think the most important aspect of a TV show is. So just kind of like the aspect of a TV show, just for people who don't know. I don't know how you wouldn't, but let's just go through them. You've got the characters. You've got the plot. You've got the writing. Am I missing anything else besides those those three? Uh, 
No, that's that's about. That's kind of like the big three. I mean, you could say like the general. I mean, you can go more specific. You could say like the setting, or like I don't fucking. No know. one's gonna say the setting. I don't know. You could say like the soundtrack. Okay. I don't fucking know. Like, dude, people get weird, bro. People get TV weird for the soundtrack. People get weird, bro. Like it's like a great episode, and then they end on like a bad song. Like, people yeah. get weird. People get weird. Alright, what do you think? What do you think? I mean, personally, I think it's. The writing, but more specifically, Ooh. the originality of the writing okay. by making it, you know, basically keeping the audience on their toes. On their toes. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. Okay. And I'm going to use an example of Stranger Things for this. I don't know if everyone's watched Stranger Things. Hey, whoa, so hey, 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 let's be broad here. Let's not spoil this. Oh, okay. Put it I mean, in like vague terms where they really kind of piece it together. Sure, I'll, you know I'll try my best. So basically, you look at Stranger Things, and the goal, like the ending of each season, is pretty pretty similar. But the way they get there, that's what makes it interesting. It's like the journey, you okay. know. That makes sense. Because even though it revolves around the upside down, they still find creative ways. Like side have... plots, side plots. Yeah, side plots. They yeah. find creative ways for the the mind flayer. With the, which is like the, the monster, monster guy yeah. the monster, yeah. to like put the city of Hawkins in distress and have the kids find a way to save it. Okay. So even though like that's maybe what the angle is, oh. <laughs> maybe that's it's just the way they do it. You okay. Know? Yeah. Okay. So for me, I think it's the characters. Okay. So I think that like I just kind of. I mean, like, the two shows that I've really, like, fallen in love with and binged, besides, yeah. like, you know, like, The Office and so I'm going to use The Office as, a, as an example later, but it's Breaking Bad and How to Get Away with Murder. We talked about both. On the, uh, Actually, I don't know if they're up, but uh, we can talk about them. But, so, for me, like, I just couldn't, like, dude, like, in Breaking Bad, like, Brian Cranston, I couldn't picture anybody else as Walt. Like, dude, Chris Pratt was almost Walt. That would have killed Wait, the show. What? Wait, what? Yeah, Chris Pratt was, like, a... He was, like, in consideration. That would have killed the show immediately. Yeah, sure. And that show had so much good writing. That's what I mean. Like, you know, Hank to it. Like, there's going to be another Hank. And I, I would use The Office as an example. Like, The Office kind of has, a like, a dead plot, I would say. I mean, there's not really okay. much going on. But the characters are so good that you just keep watching. I would counter that by saying the, the writing. writing. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, think, I watch it for the jokes. characters, not for the jokes. Okay, but I think yeah. the jokes is what enhances the characters. If that makes I don't sense. Know. I don't know. The jokes, the writing is what make you makes you love the characters. I just don't think there could be another Michael Scott. You know, like, I agree. I agree. They, I, they, that's I don't know. For me, I just kind of, I fall in love with the characters more than I fall in love with the plot. Okay. So that's why I, mean, I would it's not the necessarily characters. even the plot. It's just like. Like, all right, okay. I think. No, I see your point. I see your yeah, point. Yeah, I think like a yeah. star-studded like cast could carry kind of a drag, like a like a dead script, rather than a star's like a really good script can carry kind of a dead cast. I don't know. Okay. I mean, maybe maybe I'm wrong, and I just haven't seen the right shows yet. But I would. I mean, yeah, I would just. I feel like the characters are just like Skyler. Skyler and Breaking Bad. She played great. She was really yeah. good. And I then, just think. Yeah, wait, even, you're talking about like acting or the characters? I mean, I I put those in the same light. Okay, cool. I, I just think what kills most shows, what is it like, is that it just becomes predictable what's going to happen. Okay. You know what I mean? I like, mean, I mean, it's, like, it's just not even a point. I just think, like, this is a preface. This, like, I mean, both of these are really important. So it's not yeah. like there's, like, a like a big gap. So, like, obviously, yeah. like, the, like, the writing of the show is really important. I would just rather have really good characters. Because from what I've seen... I like the characters more than the actual plot, you know? Yeah, okay. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. All right, so All right. miscellaneous topic. I need to watch more TV shows, by the way. I'm trying at Ozark. Yeah, you should. I, d- Ozark. I mean, yeah, Ozark's all right. It's kind of weird. <laughs> gotta, you just got to give it. I give every show, like, four to five episodes. And then if I still don't like it, then you just got to stop, really. Yeah, you want to know a show that I was watching, that I tried to watch? Arrested Development. I watched like a season because everyone said it was like this is like a great show. I've never heard of that. And show. I think I think actually what killed it was the the characters. 
yeah, thanks. Maybe you're right, too. Would maybe you look right. at that? No, I'm kidding. But, like, yeah. it's just so frustrating to watch because I just hate so many of the characters. That's what I mean, I'm you're saying. Like, you gotta like one. To, you're meant to hate them. You're meant to hate some of them. No, you know, for me, like, if there's a show and you're not rooting for somebody, then what the fuck are you doing? I know, and it's yeah. framed that you should root for the main character, Michael, right? Yeah. But I just, I can't root for Michael. Yeah, see, that's, so my, dude, no, no, that's my, dude, that's my problem in Ozark. So, I don't know what it's framed to be. So, basically, for those who haven't seen Ozark, let me just give you the plot real quick. So this guy is laundering a drug dealer's money and, you know, his partner that was doing the same thing stole some money from the drug dealer. Right. So his partner got killed and then he convinced the drug dealer that if he can go to Ozark and then launder double his profit, right? That's just kind of the yeah. preface. So I think you're supposed to root for the main character. And so far, I think the main character is an absolute just dumbass. Like, if I was me, so basically, yeah. in the show, he has $8 million. Okay. And he's going to Ozark, and he has to launder the $8 million to prove okay. that he can. Bro, yeah. if I'm that guy, I'm taking the 8 mil, going to some guys to get me a new identity, and throw me in, like, Austria. And then just living my life. That's what I would do. Is he, like, is he like in danger? Uh, yeah, the, if he can't launder the money, him and his family die. Oh, what? Yeah. All right, to be fair, to be fair. If he does dip to Austria, I think his family's dead, right? Well, yeah, but at least you have a decent life. I mean, I don't know how they would find him. I don't know how they yeah, would find no, him. Yeah, no, no, but, like, his family. Like, he's he's going with his family, though, right? Oh, to Austria? Yeah. I'm not saying okay, him right. only dip. Nah, that's just yeah, a bad Yeah, okay, okay. Was... Even though his wife cheated on him, that was a great scene. Oh, dang. Nah, dude, it was, like, so his, uh... So his wife, like, took money out of their account that he needed to get yeah. a... get a ticket Because he was trying to get a new identity. Yeah. <laughs> and then the drug dealer was in the hotel room. It was like four stories up or something. And this yeah. guy just tosses uh, the, the the guy that um, the main character's wife was cheating on. Tosses him off the fucking building. And he just lands right in front of the main character. I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? The show's mad weird. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So I think, I think it's time to go into the miscellaneous topic. Yeah. If anybody has TV show suggestions, put them in the comments. We're open to them. So, miscellaneous topic. A little bit of a vibe switch, as they say in the businesses. Uh, no, so the question bad. is, if you could change one thing in the world, what would you change? Very open-ended question. So, it, right. if you have your answer, you can go first, or I can go first. Okay, no, I'll go. I'll okay. Go. What I would change is I would like there to be a common interest between each nation you know because okay. that solves a lot of issues okay because like conflict there would be a more progressive way to work out conflict you know obviously and it basically comes down to common interest is having um is being invested in the well-being of the other country you're working like you're yeah you're working with yeah. living with yeah, yeah you know yeah, like yeah. I was I was learning about the U.S. right. The U.S. in the country of Guatemala. Guatemala. This yeah. is Guatemala coup of 1954. Basically, Guatemala finally got rid of their dictator. Okay. And they elected a leader who was making a lot of progressive changes. Only problem is he wanted to re redistribute land because a U.S. company owned about 90 percent of land. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. yeah. So he wanted to redistribute that to the people naturally yeah so the u.s came in took out arbenz as a leader put in their own leader this was like during like the communists like yeah, scare, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah, that so yeah. and basically everyone in that country was screwed and it it like led to like a civil war and people in guatemala live in poverty today so it's like it's just if there was like the common interest for the well-being of each of everyone you know not just people in our own country okay then I think, I think that would be the most important thing to change. Yeah, that's a good answer. So for me, I mean, like, I feel like the obvious answer is, like, world peace. But I feel that's just kind of a cop-out because you don't really, right. like, you know, and I, you, you get what I'm saying. It's just kind of a cop-out. So yeah. I was between two. Okay? I was between yeah. two. Okay, let's hear it. The first one was that everybody in the world spoke the same language. Interesting. Just because... Really? I feel like that would help with, like, there's just no, like, that would just be a start to world peace, because, dude, like, if you don't have a translator, you can't talk to, like, a decent amount of, like, a decent portion of the world if you don't know 
Spanish or you don't know French. And I think, like, in a few years, Span- uh, Spanish is going to be, like, the predominant language in the U.S. So, like, I just feel like if there wasn't, you know, it would just kind of connect people more, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of on the same basis you were going to, but just kind of more of a social level, not, like, a war level. And then okay. I kind of just thought of this one on the fly. I don't know how much weight it has, but I was thinking, like, because a lot of wars are being fought right now on someone's interpretation of God. That's okay. kind of, like, like, that's kind of what a lot of wars stem from. I, I, I learned about the war in a social justice class. I don't know it now. But there's something going on. I think it's in Syria. I don't fact check this. I don't know. Oh, oh, is it? Oh, what's it called? It's like there's two sides in Syria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the yeah, dispute yeah. is the dumbest thing ever, and they're just killing everybody. Hold on, it's like Shia and. Oh yeah, the Shiites and the Shias. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's definitely not it. No, yeah, it is. It's just like the oh, Shiites. Oh yeah, yeah, see, that is it. That yeah, is the it. Shiites and the Shias. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And their dispute so... is something over like a, a, a small interpretation of God. Yeah. So I would try to. I don't know. If, I don't know if the question like is able to go back in time. I don't know. But for me, uh-huh. I would just go back in time, and then have there be like everyone like a universal understanding of God, because I feel like that okay. would that that would prevent a lot of wars. Yeah, and I mean like the Crusades, you know. That's what I'm saying. Like uh, a lot of wars are just happening because like one guy. Like, I think, like, the difference... Yeah, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, in Spain, they kicked out everyone that wasn't Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, at one point, I think in, like, seventh, I forget the year, but that happened. I mean, we got the Holocaust, killing somebody because they're Jewish. Yeah, that's not great. You know, and if there was a universal understanding of God, there's no, you know, Jewish. There's no Jews, because, you know, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. That's so, I feel like if there was a, I mean, personally, I'm not that religious, but I feel like if there was a universal understanding of God, that would connect people a lot more. Because that kind of divides people. You know, if you're talking to somebody yeah. and one guy is like a Muslim and the other guy is a Jew, I'm not saying they can't be friends, but it's just kind of like, I don't think they can connect on that level. This, you know, unless they're just both really understanding, which, who knows? The world works yeah. in mysterious ways. Fair enough. But yeah, that'd be mine. I mean, there's there's other ones that I thought of, but that, they're just kind of like bland. Like, oh yeah, world peace, man. Or like, oh yeah, just take every like weapon off the planet. Wow. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Yeah, what a way. Or just like, uh, like stop climate change. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, no, that, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like, there's there's a lot of those, but I just kind of wanted to go like, into more Respect detail. for nature, you know, respect for our planet. Or just respect for people, really. I mean, that as well. That's what I was trying to do with my first point. But, like, I mean, we're, ca- we're low-key killing our planet. And that's not what high you really key. want. We're, we're high-key killing you, our planet? When you live on the planet. So, hey, man. we'll see how that goes in the long run. But We're here for a good time, not a long time, as Drake once said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I Shout guess so. Shout out to Drake. <laughs> Fuck six. Yeah, the guy, like... <laughs> yeah. It's bad when the president of the United States thinks that global warming is not real. Yeah, like that's bad. That's that's not that's good. That's bad, dude. That's really bad. So yeah, that's what I would change. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think that's Those it. Those are all the pretty positive things. Yeah, this is kind of one of our shorter episodes, which isn't a problem. So next episode, yeah. uh, I don't really, we don't really have anything set in stone. So if you guys got any recommend recommendations in the comments, just put them put them there. Sure. We're open to anything. Uh, but we'll probably talk about like I was, we were really close to just doing like unpopular opinions in sports. So that's what we're we'll probably going to talk about. Hopefully Chance drops something Friday. That's a good topic of discussion. Time and then, will tell. Yeah, miscellaneous topic. It's just kind of the vibe of the day, you know? Maybe we'll think, I don't know. Who the, who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? Yeah. All right, Karen, do you have anything to say to our viewers? Any any last thing? Have a lovely, lovely evening. Lovely evening? I mean, what if they're living? Actually, I mean, what if, yeah, this yeah, is, what if they watch it in the morning? Yeah, 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 come on now. What the fuck? Just Jesus. have a nice time. Have a nice time. Have a nice day. Have yeah, a nice there, day. yeah, there it is. We got there. Catch you in the next one. Very well.